What's okay, next on so, the docket? Okay, so before we get to Rush Limbaugh um, and, and have, have fun with that, there's just one more thing I wanted to play here of this, uh, this clip from Morning Joe, which doesn't really need an introduction. We'll just react to it. All right, we'll watch the first clip. I'm not going to watch the whole thing because a lot of time, but let's watch. The, we'll watch the first part of this clip, and then uh, I'm going to play the part with the this this quote that I think is pretty incredible. But we'll we'll get the setup out for people so they know what we're talking about here. So this this relates to what the Biden administration um, may do with the Afghanistan war. Now to the situation in Afghanistan. For months, the Taliban has been encroaching on key cities, pushing the country to its breaking point. The brazen offensive puts the Biden administration in a dangerous bind, political bind, mm -hmm. as the White House weighs whether to withdraw or to stay. The Taliban is urging President Biden to honor a U.S. agreement to withdraw all American forces from Afghanistan by May which would end the two-decade-long war. According to the New York Times, if the Biden administration honors the withdrawal date, officials and analysts fear the Taliban could overwhelm what's left of the Afghan security forces and take control of major cities or a broad surrender by the Afghan government. The Times also notes that if the U.S. delays its withdrawal deadline, the Taliban would most likely consider the deal with the United States void, which would lead to renewed attacks on American and NATO troops, potentially draw the United States deeper into the war to defend Afghan forces. Well, it was a rushed deal in the first place from the Trump administration. And Richard, um, I, I, I'm just curious whether uh, the this Biden motherfucker. administration, yeah, okay. you know, Joe Biden was there in 2011 when America withdrew from Iraq, and he was there when he saw the rise of ISIS in that void. And obviously, the Biden administration understands that the Taliban, uh, their influence <laughs> continues to grow. There are ISIS elements of ISIS throughout that country. Mm. If we abandon <laughs> Afghanistan, um, okay, so. The thing I want to play from uh, uh, from from this goober, uh, particularly, mm -hmm. is um, yeah, I have a lot play. to say on this already. Just watching this clip, I'm going to kind of skip I'm some of the the question. When are we going? Uh, so I'm skipping part of the conversation to get because you know we have other things to get to on our show. But I want to focus on what he says about how we talk about the Afghanistan war. So here, health before the two before 2011. I kept asking the question, when are we going to bring the troops home? Uh, after that, after the rise of ISIS, uh, it, became, it became pretty evident that there are just some countries where if we are going to be the indispensable power on this, the, this planet, if we want to stop terrorist attacks from hitting our allies and the United States, the 2,500 troops, 5,000 American troops as part of a larger international peacekeeping force, that's an insurance policy against future 9-11s. I, 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 I hope that Joe Biden and I hope that America's leaders, Republican and Democratic alike, will start uh, framing this uh, in the way that you were, you were uh, explaining it. Uh, and I wish that, that we would have had a leader that could have explained what America was doing what special ops forces were doing in Syria uh, when we were not only protecting the Kurds, pushing back against the Syrians and the Russians. Fucking asshole. No, absolutely. I, I really dislike the phrase forever wars because it's Aww. pejorative it's, and it's, it's not really accurate. Yeah. You know, forever presence or open-ended presence is, is okay. Aww. And as you rightly say, we've had it for 70, 75 years in parts of Europe, in parts of Asia. And guess what? We've yeah, kept the, the peace guys. and we've kept yeah, the peace at a modest price. And I think yeah. we're not going to keep the peace in That's Afghanistan. There's no peace to keep, but we can maintain an authority there that controls many of the cities. And while it's imperfect, it's far preferable to the alternative. People seem to forget that 9-11 that was carried oh, wow. out by people who were trained in Afghanistan. So this is- How were they trained? 
So again, yes, it's easy. Let's expand on that, Richard. The short run will quote unquote save money and the like, but we shouldn't kid ourselves. We are not immune to developments there, and we will once again pay a longer term price for any short, shorter term gain. So hoping that the administration. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so there's so much to there's so much to address there. Obviously, the big like elephant in the room is like motherfucker, Al Qaeda wouldn't exist and the Taliban wouldn't exist if y'all had stayed out of Afghanistan in the 1980s. But no, you chose to fund the precursor to Al Qaeda, right? Which was yeah. the Mujahideen, which had elements of it that afterwards went and created this group that did 9/11 like years later. Uh, and of course, that never gets mentioned. Richard Haas is such an American imperialist. Like he has all the American, he has all all the American arrogance of like everyone of like every imperialist of the last hundred years is just like in his spirit. Um, so he can't help but to say the most obnoxious things. But the reality, I will say, of Afghanistan is that the U.S. broke it. And then it broke it again. And then it broke it some more. And the longer the U.S. stays there, the more it will break it. Yes, it's true. If the U.S. leaves, ta the Taliban is stronger than these little puppet corrupt forces that the U.S. has been propping up. But you can't stay forever. And you're making the country more unstable in the long run. At some point, you got to rip off the fucking Band-Aid. Like, and th that's the problem with Afghanistan is these people can't even explain to you why the U.S. has to stay. It's these really vague explanations as, you know, we got to prevent terrorism, ISIS, the Taliban's really mean and scary. Think like, about the women. There, there's no, and there's no mission. Like that's the other part in Afghanistan is there's no goal. There's no end goal. There's no, there's no definition or narrative of what victory means. And the U.S. and its little stupid imperialists like Richard Hess, they need, they can't leave somewhere without, without having what they feel is clear cut victory. They're like traumatized from the way they left Vietnam because um, that was like the U.S. left on the North Vietnamese terms, basically. Right. They lost, essentially. Um, and that was like a traumatic experience for American imperialists. And that's one of the reasons they I mean, they've stayed in Afghanistan also because of American interests. But, you know, the interests aren't actually clearly defined because they're vague and there, there aren't clear interests in Afghanistan. There's some like there's some interest that kind of makes sense but not for an occupying force to stay there for 21 years you know what i mean like yeah. it's at this point it's become like they just can't admit defeat um and so they come up with all of these weird justifications and also that's what the u.s does right it has a presence ever everywhere anyways as he, is, he likes to say a forever presence to keep the peace it's not keeping the fucking no. peace it's Sorry, That's, go ahead. Add your, see, add your... okay. I, I, I love I love a good euphemism. Yeah, it, it's let's yeah. not call them forever wars. Let's call them open ended presences. And yeah. uh, also, it might That's be gonna, news to people wrong. in Europe. It might be news to people in Europe that like they were um, inviting hostile forces to just occupy their <laughs> European countries. But I guess hey, there it is out in the open that like whether you wanted us here or not, Europe, we were always going to just make you our servants. Exactly. The way all of these people talk and they get so much wrong. It's like for the, for he's like, it's an insurance policy against ISIS and terrorism, just like our presence in Syria. And it's like, you guys are either, are you, are you ignorant? Are you really that ignorant or are you intentionally deceiving people? Because yeah. like, do they really, they have to know the U S armed and funded these psychos. They have to know, like they wouldn't, your insurance policy against Al Qaeda and ISIS would be if you stopped funding and arming them in countries you don't like like that would be a really helpful insurance policy you wouldn't have to worry so much about them if your policies weren't actually benefiting them you know